Okay, in this video, we're gonna just take a little bit of time and review some of the key patterns you see in formal charge for the most common atoms you'll encounter, which is gonna be carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. All right, so what we're gonna do is keep track of all the lone pairs and the bonds that each atom in each situation has. So what we're gonna do is start with the charge of minus one and just draw out examples for, let's look at C, an example for carbon with which has a charge of minus one. And so it has, we ask ourselves, how many bonds did it have and how many lone pairs? So it has three bonds and one lone pair. Okay, and then let's look at an example for nitrogen when it is negatively charged. So nitrogen when it is negatively charged looks like this. And these are just really simple examples, CH3, NH2 but they would apply for more complicated examples, of, uh, of course. So we've got two bonds, two lone pairs. And finally, let's look at an example for oxygen when it has a charge of minus one. I forgot to put my negative charge here. Negative charge. So how many bonds did it have any lone pairs? Well, it's got one bond, three lone pairs, okay? So each of these have the same charge, the charge of minus one. You can see, um, basically, in decreasing the number of bonds, increasing the number of lone pairs. So let's look at some, some examples where it's neutral. So for neutral, it would be CH4. So just draw out CH4 and bonds and lone pairs. We've got four bonds, zero lone pairs. And then for nitrogen, we've got NH3. It's got three bonds and one lone pair. So these both have these are both neutral molecules, formal charge of zero. And let's take the simplest example for oxygen, which is water. We've got oxygen, which is neutral, water is neutral. So we've got two bonds and two lone pairs. And so let's look at our final example, and that is for plus one. So for plus one, hopefully I won't run out of space here. Um, we've got CH3 and we've got bonds, lone pairs. So for CH3, it's got three bonds and uh, zero lone pairs here. And now let's look at a case where nitrogen has a positive charge. This would be for ammonium NH4. So that would have four bonds and zero lone pairs. And for oxygen, we've got three bonds and a lone pair. So three bonds, one lone pair. Now, in each of these examples, we've got nine in total. In eight of the nine, we have a full octet of electrons. There's only one exception to that. And the only exception where this doesn't have a full octet is CH3, CH3 plus here. So we've got the plus charges. In. So CH3 plus does not have a full octet. It actually only has six electrons around it and it has an empty orbital. Actually, we'll learn later it's an empty P orbital that CH3 has. The rest of these all have full octets. And it's important when you're drawing nitrogen with a positive charge and oxygen with a positive charge, remember that they also have full octets. Even though they have a positive charge on them, they're not like when you have a positive charge on carbon, which has an empty orbital, they, they actually have full octets. So kind of look at the, interesting to look at the patterns here. So with OH, we go from three lone pairs, which is negatively charged, to two lone pairs, two bonds, two lone pairs, and then um, one lone pair. So from three to two to one, it goes from negative to neutral to positively charged. So it's going from owning a lot more of those electrons to, to sharing a lot more of those electrons. And similarly with NH2 here, it's minus one. It's got two lone pairs, then one, then zero. And for carbon, it goes from having one lone pair to zero. And in the last example, it also has zero lone pairs, but in addition, it's actually lost a bond. So that's what's responsible for its, its decrease in formal charge. So if you're going to increase the formal charge of something, making it more negative, you want to go from sharing a bond between, let's say, oxygen and hydrogen to having 
that oxygen actually own a pair of electrons. So it's going from sharing two pairs of a pair of uh, two electrons to owning that pair. So that's going to make the charge more negative because it has more of an electron to itself. And of course, if you want to make it more positive, you can go from taking one of those lone pairs and forming a bond with something like H plus, and then it's going to be sharing that pair of electrons instead of having that pair of electrons all to itself, it's actually going to only have a 50% share of those electrons. So that's going to make the charge more positive by one. So those are some of the key patterns to observe that you'll see through the course with formal charge, relating formal charge to the number of bonds and the number of lone pairs that each atom has. And, and these are the three most common examples, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. You will see, of course, other examples of different atoms with charges. Um, but uh, those are, I think, fairly straightforward to keep, keep track of, uh, at least a little bit more than carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen.